Hey there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to design and make interactive sliders. And sliders are a pattern which you don't really see that often. It's really specific to a use case. And you know, as long as your users actually benefit from it, why the hell not make it? And that's where Axure comes in into play. I've done quite a few data visualization types of prototypes, which basically crunch a lot of data and you need to adjust different values. I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and create a simple slider really quickly and just gonna walk you through exactly what I mean by doing so. So I'm gonna create, first of all, a track for a slider, which is gonna be just a static feel like so. Um, it doesn't really matter how long it is or what it does. I'm just gonna make it really simply like so and maybe add some corners. So you can just see we have a track. And next thing, I'm just gonna create a trigger. So it's probably gonna be like a ball or maybe a different type of selector. And I'm gonna place it maybe in the center, let's say like so. And I'm probably gonna also add some extremes to the thing. So maybe just add a few values. So maybe this is minus 20, maybe minus 10 somewhere here. And then it goes zero here. Of course, in real life, you would want to be as precise as possible and probably add a lot of values, but that's, I'm gonna leave up to you so you can play around and maybe discover different ways, more ingenious ways to do so. So I'm gonna do minus 10 here and then on the other side of the axis, I'm just gonna do 20 here and maybe 10 or here. And then we're basically saying that the users are able to select a value and just slide the thing and, and then it should select a specific value. Like so, you would also want to maybe add a label exactly what user has to do and so here we have like a simple component. We just, you know, if we preview it, it's not gonna do much right now. As you can see, I can't really slide it anywhere. And also we don't really have the result. So ideally you perhaps would have like an input field or something or like a, I don't know, maybe like a value field of sorts. So let's see, this is where the value goes and let's do it zero and I'm just gonna add it a bit so it makes a bit more sense, like so. Again, it's good to give names to everything, so I'm gonna start by giving the text field, uh, text field, let's say result, so we're gonna remain, remember it, as well as I'm gonna convert this ball into a dynamic panel, and gonna give it a name, let's say ball, and then I'm also gonna probably select everything else and create another dynamic panel so that it sticks in the one bit and there is no confusion. So we can just kind of create a master maybe or a dynamic panel and maybe call it something like a uh, container, let's say. So it's all good in the neighborhood, but it doesn't do the trick. You basically wanna say, if this ball is moved to the left or to the right, and let's say is above some sort of other segment, add that value to a variable and that add that value to the text field. But I would first of all define exactly the segments of where the slider can go. And you can do so by simply just dragging, let's say a hotspot like so, and just creating different segments for each of the values. Again, it depends on your slider. Maybe you have 20 different values, so you would want 20 different hotspots. In this case, I'm gonna keep it quite simple like so. And I'm basically gonna say that if the ball is over that hotspot, add the value to our slider value to X. So let me just place it underneath the ball like so. So as you can see, it's in between the ball and our track which is static and I'm just gonna give it a name to every hotspot so this is gonna be 20 let's say this is gonna be 10 and maybe even identifier like h20 so it's a hotspot 20 uh, h oh it's minus sorry minus 20 and then h0 maybe and h10 and h20 
This is great. However, this thing is still not actionable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add interaction to it. I'm going to say on drag. I'm going to say move this widget because we're just moving that ball. And I'm going to say with drag X because we just want to move it from right to right. And we don't need no animations because it should just be real time and follow us around. And we can also add, you know, trajectory, boundaries, things of that nature. Um, I usually add from left to right. So let's say if we add left is greater than, I think our boundary starts here and that's zero. And this should end roughly 400, let's say. So I will just go back and add those boundaries greater than zero. And from right, we're saying it's less than, let's say 400, then we are allowing to drag it and move that bit up and down well, from side to side. So. so let's preview it and just see what exactly happens. So I guess, as you can see, I can drag that ball. And as you can see, the limit is here. So that's where 400 pixels is. So I need to increase it a little bit. You see, human estimates are never great. That's why we need machines. Uh, 470 is probably more like it. Guess yeah, okay, that's great. I think it's good enough. Um, gonna just add another five pixels and then we can move on four seven five so boundaries are set but now we're not really checking that the ball is over something so we would need to add like a conditional statement basically saying that if a ball is over that h zero make this value zero so that's what i'm exactly what i'm gonna do so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add logic to the drag ball and as you can see what we want wanted to kind of like a double check is that this object is over another object. So I would say area of widget with because we are still selecting the ball is over area of widget and we can select let's say zero. And it's gonna allow us to drag, but we also gonna add another action and set text to the field which we have and value zero. And now if we have another uh, another if, so I'm gonna toggle it so it's easy for you to understand. If let's say that ball is over the area, let's say minus 10, I'm gonna set the text to minus 10 and do so for every single segment. So we're gonna have five statements. I'm just gonna rename it case two, let's say. And let me just really quickly copy paste all of the cases. So now we have all those different segments, five of them defined, and we're stating if that ball is over them, we're gonna set the text accordingly and let's preview it. As you can see, it does all the trick and that's how it works. Now you could add variables, let's say, and calculate it more specifically and maybe even add more hotspots and maybe define more conditional statements to allow you to adjust it. But at a basic level, that's how you do sliders. And it's really up to you how much in depth you want to do because it's pixel perfect. So you can go as crazy as let's say the length of the ball. Let's say if a ball is 10 millimeters big or 10 pixels big, that's basically your minimum amount of hotspot you can put under and maybe have 20 different segments. So as usual, try to experiment with it, but it does work so far and it does work pretty well if you ask me. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. There's gonna be much more material, much, many more components to be covered in the future. So stay tuned for that and as usual, I'll see you next time.